Hello everyone, welcome to the Zentangle Project Pack series. This lesson is part of Project Pack number 17. My name is Molly and I am so excited to be able to start us off on this series. I love this project pack. I think I say that every time, but I'm, I'm actually really excited about this one. It's just really come together and it evolved and the, I feel like the meaning behind it and the tools and all that stuff has really just been a fun adventure for us here at Zentangle. We are going to be using the materials from our project pack 17 envelopes. Um, our project packs are available at Zentangle.com and from some of our certified Zentangle teachers. We do recommend watching the project pack number 17 introduction video first. There's a lot of good information there um, and it will be helpful for you before you're starting on this little journey. Um, because this particular project pack relies heavily on the materials in the project pack envelopes, we have actually come up with an alternate way to follow along for those of you that were not able to get the project pack for some way or another. And all of that information is in our introductory video. So if that's the route you're going, I do recommend going back and checking that out too, because it's, it's a fun way to do it regardless. All right, we're here, we're ready to go. And there is a little bit of... Um, order to this series. Um, some of our project packs, you can kind of watch any of the videos. Um, but this one really, uh, especially the first six videos, we want you to do them um, sequentially. So we definitely recommend starting today and then following along in order from there. So um, I have my project pack number 17 um, envelope right here. And I got an envelope full of three Z tiles, which is really exciting. And then I have um, some tools, which I've already taken out of the package for you. Uh, so we're excited to start using these new microns, these gray microns that have come out um, a few months ago. Um, two different gray tones, which will be fun to use for some details. We have a black micron in here too, three oh ones. So it's a cool gray, a lighter cool gray, and then a black. And then I have um, two different pastel chalk pencils. Um, what's kind of fun is you all out there who have a project pack might have um, different colors than I have here, and that was purposefully done so that everybody kind of got random colors. So I have a reddish color here and a bluish purple color, but you may have two totally different colors. And for those of you without a project pack, just grab two different colored pencils or do the whole thing in black and white. Either way works. And then I have my um, different tortillons to work with um, my graphite, my white charcoal, and the, the colored um, chalk pencils. So lots of good stuff here for tools. And then most importantly, I have um, a bunch of 3Z tiles here. And you should have three different designs. Um, maybe you've already figured that out. But I want you to take out all your pre-strung tiles you have. And I want you to um, figure out um, which designs match up with each other. And I want you to put them in three piles, okay? There are six total different designs that we carry here. And so you only have three of them. And these are the six different ones that we do have that potentially could be in your pack. And this is what's going to be fun about this project pack is that everybody's going to be working with something a little different. So our results, when we share them with each other, won't be exactly the same. So I'm kind of excited about this. So this is an example of all the potential designs you might have. Um, so you would have any three of these. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to slowly kind of chip away at filling in the spaces on your tiles and we'll be very um we'll give you clear instructions hopefully on how to go about doing that so like i said you should have just three of these six and most of these are going to make a lot of sense how they're laid out however there's two of them i'm going to modify and i'm going to show you that right now so um this one right here makes a lot of sense we don't have to do anything to it this one um is fine so if those are the ones you have um this one we're not modifying this one's all set so if you have either of these two, pull them out. And I, um, I'm just going to sort of add some string lines to them. So I'm going to start with this one right here. If you happen to have this tile right here, 
we're going to just add a couple of pencil lines to this tile. If you don't have this tile, do not worry about it. So I am going to hold the tile like so. So you can just arrange yours like that. Okay. And on the left side right here, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to create a smaller space here just to break our town because there's, there's too much space going on here. So this string line right here, I want you to just go over it with your pencil. And then I want to take that, the top of that line and just carry it down to the, where this hits the edge of the tile. Does that make sense? So just caught, tracing over that string line there and then bringing it down to this point right there. I'm going to turn my 3Z tile like so. And I'm going to do exactly the same thing here. I'm going to start with this string line here. I'm going to go over it with my pencil. And then I'm just going to carry it down right there. This will all make sense in a little while. Turn my tile one more time. Trace over this string line and then carry it down right over there. Again, if you don't have this particular string, don't worry about it. Um, we're just making sure that everybody following along knows how to, uh, knows what to do. Does that make sense? I'll let you look at it for one more second. And then what I'd like you to do, and you can of course pause the video to do this, um, I want you to do this to all six of your tiles that look like this. All right, so I have gone and ahead and I have six of those prepared just like so. So you can see I have a nice graph graphite line over that original string. And really what I'm trying to do is create a, a space on the corners that I can work with. And, and this will all make sense later. So again, it's just tracing over that first string line and then carrying it down to that one corner. And if that didn't make sense to you, just go back and watch it again. It's um, so easy with these videos to watch it over and over again. So I'm gonna take that stack of six tiles and I'm gonna keep them all together and if you don't have that string, you don't even have to worry about that. And then this is the other string that I just wanted to go over to make sure people knew where they were going to be working. Um, this one, I don't have to create new string lines, but I kind of just have to show you where you want to work. So again, we want to create these corner spaces. So on this one right here, it's a beautiful, fun string, I am going to trace over this space to create my string line right there. And that's going to be the space I'll work in on this tile. This one's a little more obvious over here, but you could trace it if you really need to. This is that corner space. And then over here, it's this space right here. All this space. We're ignoring that little loop there. So I'll let you check that out. And again, you're going to want to go to all six of your tiles that have this same string, if you happen to have this string, uh, and you might not. But if you do, we're going to go to all six of those and repeat that same thing so that when we go to tangle, it's really obvious which space we're going to be working in. Identify the corners. And just take your time with this. No need to rush. What's great about videos is you can always pause them. You can go back. Do that. So I'm going to take all six of those tiles, stack those up, and put those aside. Okay, so I think we have all our housekeeping done and we're getting closer to being ready to begin with our drawing here. Uh, so as I said, you will have three 
different stacks here of pre-strung tiles. And these are the three stacks that I have in front of me. Yours might be different. We offer six different ones, but we've chosen um, three per project pack. So you should have three different designs in front of you. And I think for this particular project, it would be nice to just have those three stacks sort of neatly put at the top of your drawing space. So um, maybe push all three stacks up there. And then I want you to choose just one of those stacks that we're going to work with today. So I'm going to choose um, this particular stack here, and I'm going to be playing around with those. But I actually only need one tile to begin. So you can put um, the rest of those um, 3Z tiles that look exactly like that just aside, and we're going to be revisiting those um, toward the end of this lesson. So this is the the piece that I'm going to be working on, and I'll reference all of the strings to help you out for those people that are um, working on a different string, but it should all make sense as we go along. So again, you should have just one pre-strung tile in front of you right now. And then, of course, the tools that we spoke of earlier have those um, close by, so make sure you have those. And then I invite you now to get a little comfortable in your chair, maybe adjust your sits bones or whatever it is that feels right for you. And now that we have our um, drawing space organized and we have maybe our bodies in a more comfortable position, I invite you to take a moment for uh, the first step in the Zentangle method, and that's gratitude and appreciation. And I invite you to either find a focal point in the space you're in, or maybe if you feel comfortable, gently close your eyes And give yourself a moment to first find your breath. Maybe slow down. Take note of the breath you take in and the breath that goes out. And bring your attention to something in your world you feel grateful for at this very moment. Maybe it's the time you have right now to be creating. Maybe it's the, the tools you have to create with. Or maybe it's the energy you feel from a friend or loved one. Or maybe it's something totally different. I invite you now to return back to your breath. Remember that at any point in time, your breath is there to offer a little bit of support, energy, maybe a little bit of stress relieving breath, whatever it is you need, just remember it's there for the taking. I invite you now to maybe gently open your eyes or bring your focus back to your um, work surface here and you'll find all your, your tools that you're working with and your beautiful pre-strung 3Z tile. If you are taking the sort of alternate route with the string that Maria created in the uh, introductory video, um, you can have that in front of you now too. It has all those beautiful spaces. And what I want you to do with that is I want you to choose one of those spaces just like we're going to choose one of these corner spaces and create the same tangle that we're creating and um, although you're taking a bit of a different approach you can still take the um, the information and the lesson and apply it to your surface that's a little bit different so I'm kind of excited about those projects too it's going to be that's going to be really exciting so we're going to begin here um with a real basic tangle, but a, a favorite of mine, and uh, that tangle is called tipple. And tipple is um, is basically just a series of orbs. And what we're going to do is we're going to be working just the corners today. So just these spaces um, that fit nicely onto the corners of these triangles. So again, if you had um, 
a, one of the tiles that looks like this. I want you to just be filling in this space or just in this space or this space. Maybe you start with one of these funky spaces. That's probably a good place to put tipple because um, it'll fit really nicely. Um, and again, we're going to ignore those loops. And don't worry, they're going to fade away um, in the background. Um, if you had a space like this, you're going to fill these little pie shapes right here. And again, we're just going to fill one at a time. So don't jump ahead. Just pick one and we're going to fill just one space because I'm going to offer different tangles for each one. This beautiful one, it would be just that diamond space right here. And let's see here, the other funky one we had, um, you're going to fill just this corner space that we created with the, with the graphite. So I'm going to begin with my, my black micron pen here. And I'm going to choose just one corner space on my 3Z tile. And I'm going to begin up here at the top, but you could begin in the middle or anywhere you'd like. I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to kind of trickle down here. And I'm just going to start by filling it with these orb shapes that they don't have to be exactly all the same size. And I'm really thoughtfully creating each of these circular shapes and smushing them together and kind of carefully fitting them in the bounds of my string just for fun this time. Tipple is all about orbs and a lot of times in Zentangle we refer to circular shapes as orbs and because that kind of makes it feel less like specific or perfect and orbs can be a little bit wonky or I guess have some character to them so we don't have to worry about them being perfect circles in fact they have a little little character to them and as you can see I'm I'm filling in the interstices as I go along I kind of like to do it that way some people like to put all their orbs in and then go back and fill those spaces but um, that's up to you. That's what's so great about this process is it becomes yours. So I will offer in or offer to you different ways um, to create something, but take from it what you want and then make it yours. Remember to breathe. Take your time. Just put a big one in there. If you make them too tiny, you might be here for a really long time, but some people like the way that the really tiny orbs look, and that's fine too. Turning your tile as you're working, taking your time and breathing. I think that the little inking in you do is nice. It uh, kind of makes the orbs pop a little bit more. I'm drawing my tipple orbs. I really like to make sure that I go fully circular and almost overlap where I started so you get this nice sort of seal because otherwise sometimes you can have an open circle. And I think that by, it's almost like I redraw the circle a little bit. Maybe I go all the way around again, but it creates a more sculpted orb. Taking your time, almost as if you only have to worry about that one orb you're drawing. So once you have all your tipples laid out and you've kind of carefully um, filled in the little interstices, I'm going to pick up my light gray pen. And as I said, um, there's two gray pens in this project pack and um, they're um, the pen caps, as you can see, one's a darker gray and one's a lighter gray. So for that, for now, we're just going to refer to them as dark gray and light gray. So I have the light gray um, pen in front of me right now, and I'm going to be just going back into all these orbs, and I'm just creating an inner aura. Very subtle, but um, when I get halfway done, let's look at it and see what a, a nice little detail like this does. Um, to a pattern, it creates um, some depth and maybe texture. Um, but I, that's what I like, I'm enjoying about these gray pens is you kind of can go back in and add 
little tiny details that aren't like necessarily so bold, but subtle and interesting. Maybe on some of those smaller ones, you just put a little um, dot. You don't have to be perfect. So let's see, we have about half of them done right now. So take a look, yeah, you start to see this like interesting um, detail that, that makes the pattern just look different enough. And if you sort of register this sort of technique, you could apply it to other tangles by adding these little textures to the original pattern. Sometimes you have to look a couple times to see if you got them all. Ooh, very cool, I love that. So I'm gonna cap my light gray pen here and I think I'm gonna add a little bit of um, color to this. Since the, the project we're doing is, is kaleidoscope and we're sort of talking about kaleidoscope on many levels, sort of the idea of this sort of very beautiful, um, ever-changing, uh, see a geometric reflection of color and pattern, and then also this idea of kaleidoscope as a metaphor for sort of our lives, and I love to play around with stuff like that. But I think one thing that I do think of when I think of kaleidoscopes is, is surely color, and so we're gonna be adding bits of color um, and I don't think we have to be like coloring them in. In fact, I like the way of um, adding them sort of in a nuanced kind of way. So here I'm just gonna take, um, I have a blue pastel chalk pencil, but you might have different colors. So whatever color you have, pick one. And um, I'm just going to begin by putting down some of this pastel chalk just around the edges of this tipple. And I'm putting it down pretty heavy handed because um, I want it to be really intense near the edges and then have it fade toward the middle. With any of these shading um, sort of techniques we show you, there's always another way to do it. So if you want to just watch and then go back in and do it, um, be like, oh, I like that way. That's cool. But maybe I'll try this way instead. And or, or maybe you try it this way first and then you modify it or it triggers another idea. I'm taking my tortillon now and you have tortillons that are uh, should be specific to the color so you don't muddy up the, the bold color. So this is the one I'm using for my blues. And sometimes they all ended up getting muddied, but um, I'm just gently kind of inviting the pigment into the paper. And leaving that middle space white for now. Oh, that's so pretty. Beautiful, beautiful color. So that's our tipple. I think I'm gonna leave it just at that, okay? So now I am ready to move on to my next tangle. We're gonna um, do another pretty basic tangle, um, offer maybe a little detail to it, but we're gonna stick with the basics. So I am gonna move on to um, this corner over here. And what I'd like you to do when you're working on these 3 Z tiles is um, kind of note the orientation here. So I know it doesn't look like um, it matters, but we're gonna um, always have the tipple here on the left and then I'm gonna put my next tangle here on the right. Of course, when you're working on it, it doesn't matter, but when you return it back to its original space for referencing our directions, we'll, um, we'll keep the tipple here on the left. Okay, so I'm going to um, use my uh, dark gray pen here. So I have the light gray right next to it just for reference. So again, I'm going to be picking up the dark gray pen. And you know what? If you end up picking up the wrong pen, just keep going with it, whatever that wrong pen is and just be um, consistent with it and you'll be fine. And sometimes if it pops in, you can always um, figure out some sort of a solution. So I don't, I'm not too worried about all that stuff. So we're going to begin a tangle here called Holaba. 
And Halabah is all about these beautiful um, boards that kind of stretch from one section, um, one side to another of our section. And I'm going to create one. There are two parallel lines. And then I'm going to turn my tile and create a second one that falls behind that first one. And really, that's the only trick with Halabah is sort of creating these series of parallel lines or boards and then creating more that stretch from sort of random sides. And then your only kind of rule of thumb, I guess, is that um, you want them all to fall behind the previous ones. So it almost becomes like a little game. I like Halabah because it's very formulaic, yet it presents itself as almost chaos in this very graceful way, I think. All right. Now I'm going to cap my dark gray pen, and I'm going to pick up my light gray pen, and I'm going to add a detail to my Halabah. Just putting a light gray, a stripe right through the middle. Again, adding more detail with these gray pens, just sort of seeing what kind of depth we can create. What's fun about this gray pen is it almost presents itself as a pencil. It kind of has a pencil color to it to me. So um, yet when you shade over it, it doesn't go anywhere. So it's, it's kind of a fun, there's fun stuff you can do with it. Let's see here, a couple more. That's all of them. So that looks kind of cool as it is, but let's add a little bit of shading, see what we can do um, here. So I'm gonna start with my graphite pencil on this Halibaw. And I think I'm first going to sort of locate some of these bands that seem to be closer to the top, meaning they don't have much um, interrupting them. So this one looks like one of the ones that's like up top. I'm just gonna put a real subtle shadow there. Maybe this one doesn't look like it has much. Maybe this one and this one. Yeah, that's good. Um, so that way you kind of get this depth of the other ones falling behind it. And then I'm just gonna put some graphite here right at the tip. I'm gonna do it kind of intense. And then maybe fade it up, but. I'm going to locate my tortillon that I use for my graphite and uh, kind of buff that out and then very gently I have to do much to these little trying to keep that band unshaded for fun so it just looks like a dark shadow. And now I think instead of doing all graphite, but you could keep it so it's just all graphite and that's up to you. I think I'm going to, I'm going to introduce a little bit of color here. So the second color pencil I have is this, um, this red sanguine color. Um, again, you have different colors, so work with what you have. And I'm going to just um, add a little bit of color here to the outside. And then use my red tortillon. Just take your time doing this kind of stuff because you want to focus on the materials you're using. You don't want to go fast and just um, mistakenly pick up the wrong. And if it does happen, that's okay. But there's no rush here. Take your time. Pause. Look at each material as you, you work with it. And I actually like the way this red looks, but for fun, I'm going to, I'm going to just, I'm going to play with a little bit of this blue in here. I'm just going to add a little tiny bit um, up in this corner here just to see what happens. Um, 
You know, it's a little silly, but I don't know. It's kind of fun to just get get a little funky here. So you could have left it all red if you wanted to. I just got a little funky here. I like to leave a little bit undone to see what happens. Almost like just little bits of color. Okay, we're doing pretty good here. So as we said, I'm going back to my sort of base area, my starting point here, and I have my tipple on the left, and now I have my halibut that's gonna live on the right here. And now I'm going to be working up on this last space, and I'm gonna pick up my black pen again, and I'm gonna work right here. And I'm gonna do a tangle we call, um, actually, I don't know, it's sort of like braise, and it's sort of like, a striping. So it's kind of these two tangles. Um, it's, it's brazing and striping together. So, um, but it's a nice drama tangle and I feel like it's going to sort of be a nice contrast to these two tangles that have some, um, texture in them and layering in them. And this is going to be just bold and graphic. So I like this idea of adding this in now. So on this particular tile, um, I'm going to be working these nice bold stripes in this space right here. Um, if you have a, a tile that has more of like a, a diamond shape here, you're just gonna be working, um, you're striping in this diamond space right here. And then if you have um, one of these like kind of funky tiles here, um, if you have, this one has one space as a little diamond one, but if you have one of these funky spaces left, this will be kind of fun to get a little creative, but your stripes will kind of um, fill these spaces a little different and you'll have some interesting shading opportunities there. So that'll be cool. And then of course, um, this one's pretty self-explanatory. So hopefully um, we can all following along um, and do this tangle. So again, yeah, I would say this is a lot um, most more similar to braise. Um, braise is a tangle, um, is a anagram, I think. Um, if you jumble up the letters, it um, spells zebra. So it's all about um, sort of like stripes. So if you want to watch for a minute and then follow along after, I'm going to create a series of arced stripes about this fat and I'm going to put a little aura on either side here. Everybody has sort of a different way they like to create stripes. Um, I'm not measuring out exactly where these stripes go, the distance in between them. I, um, I think it's okay if they're a little bit um, inconsistent, shall we say. I think it works out fine. And... I'm actually just carefully inking in this center area. And um, we just have 01 pens here. If you have a fatter pen and you wanna switch out and fill in the spaces with that fatter pen, you can definitely do that. But I learned it's sort of like the, um, the meditation of just filling those spaces. So either way works. I'm gonna put a little bit of space here and I'm gonna create my next stripe nice arced line and then a nice thin aura and then a fatter space here just mimicking that arc and then another aura perhaps turning your tile to a way that it's more comfortable for you just sort of getting into the zone of how the ink kind of falls on the paper you don't have to press too hard just get a little rhythm. Back and forth. Nice bold tangle. This is what's going to really complement those other tangles. Just taking your time. If you're filling um, the spaces on the bigger piece, the kind of alternative project that we had invited folks without project packs to do. Your spaces are similar to these, so you really should have had not too much trouble to find a space um, on, your, on your beautiful string to put some braise. All right. It's like I have about a little more space to add one, and your spacing might be different, so um, don't worry about that.
I don't have an exact, um, looks like I'm just going to fit a little button here, so. And you know what, if your um, stripes are different sizes, one fat, one strength, uh, thin, that's okay too. Don't worry about it. Um, it's, I think what you're trying to get out of this tangle is get that sort of bold ink and that um, contrast with the white space. So you have this like nice um, sort of yin and yang kind of thing going on. All right, so let's go take it back to our, our base here. So we have our tipple, our halibut, and our braise at the top. And um, whenever you do any inking in, you want to make sure that your tile is not um, damp or moist when you go to shade because that can sometimes cause um, sort of when you can sort of smear a little bit. But uh, mine seems to be okay. So I am going to go in with my graphite pencil. And I'm going to use the point of my graphite towards the edge here. And I'm going to put a nice dark bit of graphite on the edge and then just kind of easing it up toward the middle a little bit. Again, a nice dark bit. And then easing it as I go towards the middle. And then grabbing your tortillon that is for your graphite. And just easing that graphite towards the middle. and sort of allowing yourself this really cool highlight in the middle. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Almost glows, all right? I love to get it really dark near the edges. And I'm not gonna add any color to this striping because I think it's kind of cool with just the black and white um, next to the things of color. So let's get our 3Z back to sort of that um, starting point where we talked about we had our tipple on the left, halb on the right, and striping on the top. Now, what I invite you guys to do for your homework is I want you to create six more of these. And um, luckily, I've already done that. <laughs> Actually, I mean five of them, so you have six total. So I want you to fill in all of those. So we have the beginning but don't worry, there's more to come. So this is just a start. But what I need you to do is fill in your, your three tangles on each of these six tiles, and then we will return tomorrow for a more tangling. And we are going to gradually be filling in um, all of these pre-string tiles. So we'll be kind of like chipping away at different strings and then coming back to different ones. It's going to be fun. I'm sure you all did an amazing job and you can uh, work on those and um, feel free to go back and watch the video again as you're working through it if you like to have that sort of guidance. And for those of you that are working um, on your um, bigger piece like this, you're going to gradually um, fill these in. Um, I just have one of each right now, but I'm going to slowly fill in um, six of the halibut somewhere on my tile and six of the braise somewhere on my tile and then six of the tipple. And it's up to you if you want to do the same color um, shading on each one or do you want to mix it up or maybe you want to kind of meter them out in a particular way. All of that is an option. Um, I'm kind of going to do mine a little bit kooky and crazy and see what happens. And then um, we'll be filling this in um, as we go along so that we have a finished one at the end as well. Um, but this is what we got so far. So we had fun with some tipple, halva, and a little bit of braise. And um, we're colliding our scope, kaleidoscoping our way through this Project Pack series. Thank you, and we'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye-bye.